and welcome back y'all so we have our very special guest with us the super talented actor misha Osharove. what's up misha oh you know how art thou i i art good um considering (laughs) that the apocalypse is loosely unfolding outside of my apartment but overall i can't complain um, you know, I mean, yeah. it's 2020. At this point, it's expected. Exactly. Yeah, we're yeah, expecting the purge any moment now. It's pretty <laughs> crazy. I can't believe it. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah I'm, here, I'm here in LA and I'm fully prepared for, well, honestly, whatever happens. I have enough food to last me two weeks, so maybe I just won't leave my apartment. But yeah, <laughs> that's good. I have Seamless's number or their app for another two weeks, I would assume. So <laughs> oh, hopefully they will, <laughs> they will just provide sustenance. <laughs> <laughs> that is so exceedingly New York of you, my goodness. <laughs> right. But right. Like, like we went to the grocery store yesterday and like stocked up. Yeah. We were like, I don't really feel like going out tomorrow mm-hmm. or Wednesday. I went to the grocery store today and I got orange juice for my champagne. <laughs> and I also Very got important. paper towels. To clean up when Sustance. you spill your champagne. <laughs> to, to clean, clean up. up when I spill the champagne. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, yeah. we finally did it right because when Hurricane Sandy happened, I know you used to live in New York. You were here when Hurricane yeah. Sandy. So yeah. we went and got snacks then and food and we ate them all in one night. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Um, they don't need to know that. <laughs> yeah, we can But last night we didn't do that. So we're excited. So how do you, first of all, with everything going on, what is the biggest difference for you living from New York to LA? Like, talk to us about that so um red hawk real talk i'm not gonna lie i'm glad that i'm stuck here in la and not in new york i'm sure i i have all my friends are saying that it's really doing okay and y'all are finding your groove but like i have space here there's sunshine my apartment's real nice and it's bigger than my shoebox that it was in new york okay you can um, stop wow that sounds nice do you have any pets I don't have any pets because I would definitely kill oh, them. I, lit- I literally <laughs> killed. No, 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 guys. I literally killed a cactus. I killed it. It's de- like it shriveled and died because I miscared for it. There's a there's a cactus part two. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna do better next time. Um, but yeah. it's okay. At least yeah. you Dust recognize your off. mistakes. You learn from it and Try you vote. Again. You just vote. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just vote. Oh, just God. vote. Just vote. <laughs> Right. So Misha, um, you are in Freaky, which is coming out this week. Um, this Friday, Friday the 13th. Yes. Tell us how that came about and how the experience was being part of that film. That came about because I, like many other actors, like to get paid to act. And they, oh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, they, <laughs> <laughs> um, I was actually auditioning a lot at the time and I read the script and started, um, started the process of auditioning for it. And when I read the script, I was like, gosh, this is lit. At the time, I didn't know it was called Freaky. It was untitled Christopher Landon project, but like, this is freaky. It's fucking weird. <laughs> I had to curse. Yeah, yeah, of course. yeah okay. absolutely. Cool. Fuck um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, no, it, it just reads really wacky, but it also just kind of worked. Um, so as I was auditioning for it, um, it's this really sassy gay character that has like a good amount of like, damn cool moments, like actually appreciate that this character is a human. Um, and it, I, the auditions went really well. I had six different costume changes for three scenes. Shit you not. Um, hey. You love that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I went for it. And Chris seemed to like what I had to offer. So we, we ended up working on it and it was a blast and it was uh, no, kind of nothing but just like a crazy roller coaster good time and not scary as I thought working on a scary movie would be. It was kind of the opposite of scary. It was just kind of a blast. Aww. Yeah, I, awesome. I, I felt the same way when I did my first horror movie, uh, Darrell Anthony. <laughs> and it was a good time. It was just a lot of laughs, <laughs> way more than yeah. it probably should have been. <laughs> for multiple different reasons. Um, Misha, we we obviously, we got a chance to check check out your work in Freaky. It was yes. absolutely amazing. It was so funny. <laughs> you were so great. Um, obviously, we're not going to give any spoilers to our listeners. You all need to check it out this Friday. But was it super important for you to play an LGBTQ character in Freaky and show that representation? And how is it working with Vince Vaughn? He's hot. I love him. <laughs> um, two very similar questions, right? Um, no, I... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I slid that in. It, it 
was it was amazing to play a queer character obviously it was even more amazing to play a queer character that moves the plot forward and isn't just a device and has some agency um but the the great thing about this is that michael kennedy our co-writer and chris landon our writer and director um they're both queer individuals and they brought that like kind of innate understanding of the rhythm of how a gay person might speak and also the the kind of superhero queer that they wish that they saw when they were in high school watching horror films they brought all of that to this script and this character and the i, I i'll never forget this uh, i had i didn't even have the role yet i was doing one of these a zoom with chris the director as like a test to see if he liked me um and he said if, if something along the lines of like uh, any other thoughts, any final thoughts on the role, any questions you have? I'm like, it's not so much a question that it's just like, look, if you give me this role, I'm going to make this character a human. I don't want him to be a caricature. And I feel like if I, if I have a sense of what my other actor friends are probably doing in these audition rooms, you're probably getting a good amount of caricature because that's the roles that queer people are used to auditioning for. Um, mm -hmm. And and I'm not, I wasn't going to do that. And I had no intention of doing that. And if he gave me the role, I was going to do my damnedest to make Josh a real human being that has like wants, needs, desires, and fuck ups. And that's what ended up happening. So that was really fun. And Vince Vaughn is an energetic, very curious delight of a human being that if you have not had two cups of coffee, you really need to get on it because he is, he is on all the time all the time wow. okay. are we that. sure it's coffee <laughs> I, I, to, to be to, to be quite frank with you yes um but okay <laughs> okay, okay. You know, he just he he seems to have done this thing where he's able to like have the curiosity and kind of energizer bunny uh soul of a like a 17 year old burgeoning actor filmmaker but in his much older than that much taller than that body um and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, no, he, he really is a delight to work, work with, but you really need to, he expects a lot of everybody around him. He expects you to keep up, to improv with him, to answer his questions, to ask your own, and you got to do it if you're going to be around him. That's amazing. I love that. Awesome. I love another actor that can challenge me and like, like bring me to their level. Mm -hmm. Real. Otherwise, I'm going to look like a booger. <laughs> Real. <laughs> So Misha, in real life, you identify as non-binary. For our listeners out there who may not understand what that term is who, or who may need to be educated a little bit more on what that term means, what, it, what does that mean to you? What's the definition for you? Sure. So I've been really lucky in my life to have a few kind of queer mentors along the way. Um, some of them identify as non-binary or trans non-binary. Some of them um, fall completely out of the gender binary completely. And for me, what non-binary means, it means the freedom to not, uh, it was a lot of not for me. I wanted and badly felt I needed to reject the he, him, guy, man, bro, Misha, which I certainly tried to fit into, especially before I was out and even after I was out and trying to insert myself into incredibly toxic Hell's Kitchen gay culture. Ha 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 ha. Um, but, uh, <laughs> That's probably what you meant, Brayton. I, mean, <laughs> I was Mr. Gay New York about 15 years ago. So maybe <laughs> 15. in our early 20s. Okay, it was it was early. 10. Eight, nine, nine anyway, years ago? so Whatever. thank you, thank you for voting for me. But <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and vote some when more. I okay. <laughs> school. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, I uh, look. I I spent a lot of my life. I grew up in a very conservative household, uh, immigrant parents, and I I wasn't able to express femininity or queerness or anything really outside of standard masculine presentation and. It got to a point in my 20s later in life and it's just become suffocating to me. So uh, quite recently, I really had to sit down with myself actually during quarantine and I said, okay, what is going to make me happy in terms of how I move through the world? And the rejection of the he, him of it all was really it. And I got, you know, I got the goosebumps. I danced around my apartment, literally naked. Like I, my roommate who's right there was not around. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> I, it, it just became such a celebration. And through that, I realized that non-binary for me means that I don't necessarily, I certainly don't identify as he, him. I also do not identify exclusively as she, her. Those are not my suited pronouns either, but some, but they, them pronouns feel most at home for me. And I would appreciate if everybody around me respected that insofar as I'm not a guy and I'm not a girl, I am non-binary. My name is Misha and I moved through the world with a lot of queer energy. That's what it means for me. 
That's amazing. You're an experienced dog. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's I awesome. love that. That's beautiful. <laughs> How do you think it is identifying as non-binary in show business? Uh, you know, I expected a bit more pushback. I, um, I, I think, I think we're all having a similar version of this conversation, right? Of like representation has steps, and we are all kind of moving through them a little, albeit a little, a bit clunkily at times. But um, I've experienced a good amount of writers, and especially as I'm getting scripts and auditioning for them, and uh, projects that are really making an effort to include and represent folks in the queer community. Um, uh, sometimes it's better than others. Sometimes you get those writers that have been working for a network for 10 years and are trying their first stab at writing about somebody that is not from their lived experience. And that is wonderful. And I can mm -hmm. do nothing but commend that. I would also prefer that maybe a queer writer be writing about queer experiences, but that's kind of further into yeah. representation Excellent. awesomeness. Yeah. Um, but I will say that so far it's been more welcoming than I realized. Some of the non-binary and genderqueer roles that I'm auditioning for are really fabulous and really have a lot of meat to them, which I really appreciate. And I can only hope that we continue in this direction. And that's, I think, what we are all probably in this digital room fighting for, as, as opposed to it being a fad. Because if it's just going to be a fad, then fuck that nonsense. We're going to make some noise. But, you know. Yeah. Right. Right. Hell cool. yeah. Amen. We just recently watched the new craft that just came out. Craft. Mm -hmm. um, Legacy. Legacy. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And it was for me very just queer led, which was a beautiful mm -hmm. thing to see. Yeah. And that they were actual like grounded human beings in this world that we've created. And that's yeah, like you were saying, some like slapstick mm -hmm. joke comedy situation yeah. happening. And it was like it was that was nice and refreshing. Yeah. One could call it gerrymandering slapstick comedy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly. Did you get that I mean, <laughs> Speaking of slapstick, I saw that you worked on A Clockwork Orange on Broadway. Ooh. I did. I did. That's amazing. Yeah. Do you prefer oh. acting on the stage or the film? Or on film? Um, I started, as many kids did, kids. I mean, I was 18 or 19 when I'm like, I'm going to be an actor. Um, <laughs> but we know. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. Know yeah. Well. We're all there. We know well. yes. um, I, um, I love stage because I understand it from like a nerdy perspective. I went to school for it. I did Shakespeare festivals as my first professional gig. Like I was in there for a second. And Clockwork Orange was kind of like the pinnacle of that sort of like moment in my life. Of course, I want to go back to stage, by the way. But um, for me, stage has always felt like a job I understand. Film and TV and working on camera has always felt like a craft that I enjoy. I, mm -hmm. yeah, I That's, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm like, right I, with I, you. I feel like kind of the same way. It, it also it, helps that film and TV pay more. So, well, you know? that, that too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reality. Totally I love to see the checks. <laughs> No, well, that brings really me to my know. next question. Um, yes. You, we see a lot of films being brought to Broadway. What film would you want to see brought to the uh, the big stage? When it's allowed. In right, like, in like 2025. In, right. <laughs> like 2050, maybe. <laughs> 2100, um, whenever Broadway's back. Of course, of course, you know, next century. I'm going to call yeah. out a friend of mine who I can't even say his name because of the kind of nature of the project that he's working on but um uh, do i even hmm, it's considering this a queer podcast so broke back mountain has had many iter iterations and mm -hmm. i've there's been several attempts to bring it to the stage or to advance it anywhere from the film because of obviously the book was so amazing but i have a friend who's working on a version of that story to bring to the stage and it was one of those things where when i saw like a workshop production of it right it was one of those things where I saw the workshop production taped. I wasn't in the room. And how, if, if a theater piece with actors moving around a space with blocks and chairs and scripts in hand filmed on a not so great camera, poorly edited, can still move you to tears because it was like so- Blair Witch Project. <laughs> exactly, yeah. No, <laughs> um, but no, it, it, it really was a masterful uh, understanding of the film put onto a stage 
for the stage. It wasn't a retelling of the film on a stage. It was very much mm. the, it, it inhabited its own world on a stage and it made me cry 10 times more than the film did. And I hope, and I'm manifesting that that becomes a reality for my friend because that would be incredible. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Awesome. I think we, I know about the Misha. I can't say, but I, I saw that come out. That there's something out about that, a little something that came out. Wait, why can't you talk about that? Um, <laughs> I know exactly what this, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. Don't let's, know, I don't know the rules. I don't know the rules. <laughs> yeah, there are no rules. Yeah, there's well, always that, rules. You don't know the rules. There, there's a different generation <laughs> coming out that's going to appeal to another letter in the LGBTQ community. Misha, will you be in it? I mean, not that I know of, but hey, let's manifest that too. <laughs> yeah, let's put that in there. I need Whatever. a check. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah. So I wanted yeah. to go back to about you talking about representation matters. So you have the short film every day. Can you talk to us about that and the importance of body positivity? Sure. So look, part of my shtick or spiel or whatever you want to call it is that I am actively, openly and proudly in recovery from an eating disorder. Um, and when that when I decided that I wanted to make an art piece about that, I actually connected with another dear friend of mine and a schoolmate, Angelica Santiago. And we made uh, a script and a film and ended up producing it ourselves along with like a Kickstarter campaign situation. Um, it is about, the film essentially is a day, in, a day inside the minds of two individuals living with active eating disorders. And I always like to say for that film in particular, it came about as almost like uh, everything in, in the world at current about eating disorders in pop culture was like anti-inspiration for me. There's films out mm -hmm. there that they, they glamorize eating disorders. They, they only get at a certain part of it. For, for the most of pop culture, eating disorders only exist in thin, young, white women. And it's not, it's not remotely yeah. what it's not remotely what an eating disorder is. And in fact, one of the things that I always say is that the last thing that an eating disorder is about is food. Um, it's about shame and how you move through the world and what your body means to you and the distorted relationship with food in your body, how society causes you to view your body. So mm -hmm. that film was really a labor of love in that I wanted to put out into the world a message that people every day, haha, move through this world um, <laughs> living with active eating disorders and it really does run their lives and it's only becoming more insidious as we all engage so much with social media and the facetune and the mm -hmm. photoshop and uh, unrealistic beauty standards set by celebrities that are incredibly problematic um and mm -hmm. i have to say even as a, even as i've been on my little queer journey the the one of the single most healing thing I've done in recent history for me is coming out as non-binary because it actually freed me from a lot of the pretty toxic standards that I mentioned earlier in like the Hell's Kitchen gay community about what bodies are supposed to look like and what mm -hmm. what what kind of privilege does or does not come with having a certain body that means depriving your self of necessary nutrients or going to the gym way more than is healthy and I, for me, if I can do anything with my little voice and my little career, it absolutely will be along the lines of body positivity. And I like to talk about it more in that body reclamation, like be positive, be negative, do your damn thing. But I want to hear people reclaiming their body. It's their own. If they get to do with it what they like and treat it like the temple that it is, not do to it what society demands of you because of a certain aesthetic. I think that's incredibly mm -hmm. toxic. So yeah, yeah, 100%. yeah, and like you said, especially within the gay community, like we always, I think the normal mindset in terms of body positivity is with women, but especially mm -hmm. in the gay community, it's even more apparent. So thank you for being a voice for that. Yeah, yeah, happy to. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I want to ask you. I did a little bit digging slash stalking on you, <laughs> Anisha. And don't be embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed. <laughs> um, so you were a part. Can't see the fear on my face. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is all fun and games. So you were a part of Watch What Happens Live. Um, I think it was in like 2017. Is that right? That sounds right. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, few questions. How? <laughs> when? <laughs> what? Where? <laughs> who? Okay. Why? Awesome. So and why? So I know. Okay. So you were on the episode with Kelly Dodd from Orange County, Real Housewives of Orange County, and Leanne Lachlan, a former Real Housewives of Dallas. 
Mm-hmm. First of all, what was your, she's former, she's gone. So <laughs> what was your um, participation in the show? And did you meet those women? Oh yeah, so that was in, that was a press move for Clockwork Orange. Me and some of the cast of Clockwork Orange were the bartenders on that episode. Um, yes. Love it. Yeah, and I did in fact meet these women. And the first thing that came to mind was how small and real skinned I am <laughs> and how and how large and just so well done, but plastic they are. They're just love so, that like, answer. Like, they're just I am I'm again, I'm a pretty small human. And I was like literally when one of them gave me a hug and I was like looking up my I don't even reach your boobs. I mean granted your heels are so tall. But, like, <laughs> Um, but it was a super fun experience. We got literally, we, cause that show were really sweaty. Like we have two of those costumes because we sweat through the first one in 30 minutes. It's a 90 minute show. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. And so we had to go into a third costume change, do the quickest hair and makeup, get into a van that took us from 8th Ave all the way either, I think it was downtown to where it shoots. And it, it was a journey. We literally like got shuttled onto a TV set and they're great. They're here. They're standing behind the bar. Three, two, one, rolling. You're on TV. That's <laughs> pretty much how it works at Pride the Podcast as well. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> Listen, we were and went to the audience at the we, clubhouse yeah. a couple of times yeah. and we um, <clears throat> got lit. Like, like the I'm drink. Learning. The drink. As I'm learning, <laughs> I have friends that were in that damn audience that I had no idea, but y'all are getting wasted. They took our yeah. time. Wasted. Like the yeah. first time I was in the audience, my eyes rolled into the back of my head. I, couldn't even, <laughs> I was <laughs> God, like, I was obliterated. We were just that's screaming. Not, Woo! The exactly audience people was like, amount of oh my, no. me. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I want to be a little bit, not shady, just be honest. <laughs> when you met Leanne Lachlan, <laughs> Did you get a sense that she was a racist? Oh, hmm. um, you know what? The, to be fair, you are asking the wrong queer because I've never seen an episode of Real Housewives anything. Um, oh, yeah. Well, I know this was saying, great. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, okay, I'll have my people go out and, and cancel this episode because no, it's fine. <laughs> 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 Um, um, I, well, here's what I'll say. I have always had a very clear idea of what kind of human public figure, maybe knock on wood celebrity I want to be. And there's many different routes to get to said place. And I just have never understood the reality TV route, namely because mm-hmm. I don't actually think I'm that interesting of a person that a camera wants to follow me the fuck around all the time. But I, th- there's this element of like, I, they are on a different planet. They're on a different planet. Yeah. And oh, they, for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and they are accustomed to saying things that are meant to be incendiary and reactionary. And when something and when some of their problematic views may or may not slip out, that is on them because they are used to saying those things all the time. Those are my absolutely thoughts. that's fair. Facts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I have a question. When you were here in New York, what was your favorite bar club to go to? I love the Honeywell in Harlem. It's huh? it's like, well, okay, wait. I, I want to take it. I want to. I want, okay. Two part answer. The Honeywell for like hanging out with my friends, going on a date, looking impressive. Like I know cute spots when I actually don't. Um, or <laughs> right uh, for 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 like dancing, like true queer, sexy ass, sweaty dancing. Three dollar bill. Three dollar bill is lit. It's in Brooklyn. I love it, and yeah. I think it's. I I've think never it's been. Cool. Have I been? No, yeah, okay. none of us have. Mm-hmm. Wow, y'all just made me so sad. Because I'm actually like, maybe I went with the house and then pandemic. Um, what? But, yeah. Right, but they're open now because they're host. They're having drag shows. Right, like, and they're every having, Friday. I have my food has been to yeah. three dollar uh-huh. bill. I have yeah. 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 No, what's the bar that we went to in Harlem that? We were going to so much right before the pandemic. Oh, the sweet. The sweet. sweet. We were going to the sweet a lot. It's, Where's that? It's like on 109th and something. Oh, it was Upper West, I guess. Yeah, so sure. Upper West. It was called the Sweet. That's that pocket it was fun. I never went to. I It's either mm-hmm. like Upper West, like 80s and 90s, like bougie-ass bars, or then I take the train up to where I live. And then I have like right. uh, 145, yeah. 150s, 180s, those bars. So, mm-hmm. so you were here when boxers when- first started up here. Mm-hmm. I was. I was at the great Listen, opening. It's gone. It's gone. They're closed, like, yeah, for good. 
I sad know. face. I don't really miss it. I, I don't either because it was trash service. It really was. Yeah, it was. I miss it just because of the nostalgia. Sure. I guess. Yeah. Real. It was yeah. just overpriced, watered down vodka. Oop. Well, but that's but that's, but like every, that's every mainstream gay bar, except well, right? That's, that's true. true. But our our home bar, our bartender, uh, Stephen, friend of the pod, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, rock bar. A true, um, Stephen have, is a true ally. We love that. <laughs> um, Misha, mm-hmm. I wanted to talk to you about your experience on AMC's uh, Nosferatu. Speak to us yeah. about that. Like you had a few episodes in that really awesome show. Tell our listeners about it. So, I mean, that was my first TV gig and it was, yeah. you know, yeah. And like, it was, I mean, it, look, the first I met Zach, I met Zach Quinto on set and I made a, mm-hmm. probably a fool of myself because Zach Quinto plays a vampire in that yep. show. And some of the time he's like in full, like gnarly makeup. And I'm like, I'm Lottie fucking dying on my first day on set. And like, I am like learning my lines. Somebody just finished doing my makeup and this old ugly ass guy walks on set and he's in he's in a costume so i'm like okay that's like the old vampire ha 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 and i like i don't don't pay him any mind i he keeps staring at me though and i'm like hmm why first of all zach quinto if you thought i was even remotely attractive i'm nothing but flattered but um like Mm -hmm. lo and behold obviously end of the story it's zach quinto and i've been kind of a cold bitch this entire time and i'm like (laughs) fuck me sideways um, but, <laughs> um, no, literally. But no, it was, no, I mean, no, but, but actually, it's a quick window. Um, no, it was, right, right, right. Right. It's so manifest that as well. Right. Yeah. yeah. No, it, it was super fun. I met one of my dearest friends, Ashley, who stars in that show. Um, I, I, she's now out here in LA. Um, and I actually am with her management now. And like, she, uh, she was actually really the, the best experience I had during that show was meeting such an amazing kind of like soulful actress. She's so fucking talented. It makes me nauseated. Um, but yeah, it was super <laughs> fun. Um, That's great. Right. So you've done that and then you did Freaky. So are you like a big horror fan? Is that like, do you think you'll do more? Like, I mean, now I guess I was introduced to this genre by way of doing Freaky. Like I have... Um, I've, I love, I've loved horror films in the past. Like I think like Ari Aster, Hereditary, uh, Midsummer, like God's gift to films. Like I think they're incredible. One of my favorite films of all time is Jennifer's Body. Um, I think it's a great horror film. Like, yes! Jennifer's Body. <laughs> it's almost like Thai food here. Have y'all been fucking? Yeah. <laughs> yes! It's definitely get the respect yeah! that deserves. It's such a good movie. It's, oh, but it's finally getting a cult following. Finally, it took a second. Diablo yeah. Cody also, you're amazing. I love you. Please engage with me in life. Um, but, <laughs> um, but I was, I didn't understand not just the fandom, but the culture behind horror, specifically queers in horror until I worked on Freaky. And I've been introduced to people in like in LA, like Sam Weinman, who I'm like kind of dubbing like the, the king slash queen, whatever you want to call him of like horror. And like, there's, there's a whole world of queer horror people that love this genre and really want to forward for lack of a better word the queer agenda through horror films um yeah and now i do want to do more horror because i understand it i didn't understand it before mm. so yeah that's amazing we I gotta work that. together <laughs> okay. i feel like we should just do like a big old queer movie and make it horror and do it <gasps> I want right. to. I want what to. are your <laughs> What are your plans um, for the launch of Freaky? Are you doing anything like this week, leading up to the launch? The premiere? So I know there. I mean, COVID is kind of all over the place. So Blumhouse and Universal have been very What's much. That? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 sweetie. We're on the coast. We're not in the middle of the U.S. Where we're still trying to get that message. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ah. Ah. Um, um, the we, <laughs> have done some really fun stuff. Like we actually had a drive-in screening here for our world premiere at Beyond Fest. That was amazing. Um, nice. I thought you were gonna say Beyonce for some reason, and I was like, "What for Beyonce? No, no, no. For Beyonce? <laughs> no, no, I'm not. I'm not that cool yet." Um, <laughs> But uh, the, I'm sure that me and some of the cast members are going to safely get together. If we can all get COVID tested, we'll hang out. If not, we'll be on blankets six feet apart, all that kind of stuff. Um, it's very much up in the air in terms of there's going to be like another premiere event. And we're so lucky that we had that first one. We rented a vintage car. I was in 10-inch heels. It was so fun. 
Um, I'm on to uh, it. Uh, yes, uh, platforms. I'm not I'm not that talented. Um, but no, but listen, you it. still gotta have some talent. I'm very clumsy, so I will break my ankles. Now, nah. <laughs> fair, <laughs> fair enough. I wore um, heels for but, Halloween this year. What were you? And last year, they before me. <laughs> Jarell and I went as Angelica and Susie from Rugrats. Fun, cute. It Amazing. was cute. <laughs> Yeah. I'll send you the pic. It looks really good. Please do. <laughs> I mean, it's, okay. it's better. It's better than my costume. I was a lump of coal. Oh, <laughs> a lump of coal. As in, like, when, Why? You're naughty, when you're on the naughty list and you don't get any presents from Santa, you get a lump of coal. Wow. <laughs> so they get you. <laughs> so you've been on the naughty list. That's a brilliant twist. <laughs> what are you doing on the naughty list? Nothing. I'm so innocent and. I'm just- You can check <laughs> out Nisha's OnlyFans. <laughs> oh, <God>. uh, <laughs> slash freaky. Slash freaky. Oh my God. Oh my God. The production company would literally kill me, but sure, I mean, you know, horror. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's has the eye. <laughs> right. <laughs> Misha, you've been so much fun to chat with, yes. and we want you to come back and do this again. So please, please take that. time and do that with us, please. Yes, our I former will. Heights neighbor. Yeah, seriously. Well, when 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 the world is better and I'm back in New York, we can do the thing. We can kiki. Yes, yes. and when we're in LA, we'll do brunch. Come to me. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we'll go out there because I need some sun, some water, yeah. something. Sun and surf. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Misha, we thank you so much. Sure. No, we don't <laughs> have water. No. <laughs> We've got brown tap. Oh no, no, no we don't. Tap is really tap nice. Is really good. <laughs> okay, New York tap water. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> well, Misha, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you. And everyone. So please welcome. be sure to check out Freaky. That is in theaters this Friday. This Friday. It's Friday, Friday the 13th. 13th. Spooky, spooky. You should tell everyone where they can find you on social media. You can find me at Misha Oshrovich. It's suit. I am the only Misha Oshrovich in existence. If you need that spelled, <laughs> don't ask me to do that for you. But yes. <laughs> Google. 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 Yeah. But yeah. Thanks, thanks Misha. Bye. 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 Bye.